Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava. This is Winnie, very sleepy Winnie. And um, we're gonna be talking about all of the books that I read in September. I actually had a fabulous reading month quality and quantity wise. I was just, I, I was getting into it. I was reading a bunch of books. So let's get into this. We're going in chronological order. So the first book that I read for the month was actually reread. This is Secrets of a Summer Night by Lisa Kleypas. This is the beautiful step back. Like I love this one. I wish I could like print it out and frame it. I could stare at it all day long, I swear. <laughs> um, but this is a reread for me. If you didn't know, I'm part of the Wallflowers read along um, with B, Christy, Rachel, and Tiffany. We are all reading and some of us rereading the Wallflower series by Lisa Clippus and having a live show discussion every month. Um, so I was behind and uh, missed last month's live show for this one. So I decided to get caught up to read September's book, which I'll talk about in a second. But this was this was August. <laughs> this starts out the series, the main series, um, where all of our wallflowers meet, but this one specifically is about Annabelle. And she's a wallflower because no one really wants to dance with her, no one wants to pursue her because she does not have a dowry or a fortune of any kind, so she's not very desirable to men of the time. But then enters Simon Hunt, who has just been on her nerves for so long um, and constantly asks her to dance and be with her. All she knows about Simon is that he's a debauched, self-made man, which is not what the ton would consider like a good quality man. So she just keeps rejecting him and he keeps pursuing her. It's actually a really good romance. Um, it's not my favorite in the series, um, but I do feel like it's a good starter book and and um, I do love Annabelle and Simon. I have another historical. This is Falling Into Bed with the Duke by Lorraine Heath. I've heard really good things about this one. I have to show off this step back too because I'm always so jealous of this dress. I, I need it, I want it in my life. I actually really enjoy this one as well. It's one of my favorite books of the month. Um, our heroine is a spinster, okay? She is, I think at like the ripe old age of like 24, 25, I wanna say, and she's not married yet. And that's because every single man who has asked her to marry him, they only want her fortune. She has a very large dowry. Her father is very wealthy and they just want her for the money. But she is adamant on finding love like her mother and father did. She decides that she wants to lose her virginity and she goes to this club where women can do that secretly by wearing like masks and stuff. And there she finds our hero who is a very scandalous, Duke, the Duke of Ashbury, and that's kind of how things progress and things start. He doesn't know who she is because she's masked, um, but she knows exactly who this man is. So it was a really good read. It was really immersive. The audiobook was fantastic as well. Another historical. I was in a historical mood, if you could not tell. This is Forever Her Marquess by Scarlett Scott. I'm going to be honest and say I don't really remember much about this book. Um, it was very, very, very short. I think I listened to it in like a day. And I think the hero ruins the heroine and they have to get married or something along those lines. And I also think like the hero needs to marry a wealthy woman because he's going into debt or something, but then he ends up ruining this heroine and she has a lot of money or something like that. I don't honestly remember, sorry. <laughs> I listened to another novella. This is Stuck With You by Allie Hazelwood. So I read another Allie Hazelwood book. I read my first one last month and actually was surprised on how much I enjoyed it. This one is a romance between two characters who are stuck in an elevator, elevator, sorry, elevator <laughs> together. But there's also flashback scenes to how these two people met and why they are in the outs with each other currently because you can see in the present time when they're stuck in the elevator um they're not really friendly anymore <laughs> like what happened to them so there is flashback scenes to figure out like what happened to them but both of these characters are i believe engineers and they work at the same company or in the same building I don't know, either some company or same building, I'm not sure. But it was entertaining, it was fun, I really enjoyed it. I forgot to list tropes from my other books. So I guess we'll start the tropes here because I don't want to go back. <laughs> this one is a novella, it's a STEM romance, and it's stuck in an elevator. I have a monster romance. This is Held by a Monster by Kenzie Kelly. These two characters meet when the heroine is running away from her captors who kidnapped her and this monster actually saves her in the woods. And when this monster rescues her, she figures out that there's a whole world of monsters and monster creatures and whatnot. The middle was, I feel like, a little slow for me personally, just because they fell for each other very, very, very quickly. And there was a lot of side plot with things 
that had nothing to do with their romance and I think I like to focus on the romance more so. Tropes for this one you have Fated Mates, A Mating Bite, Monster Romance, Possessive Hero, and the Savior trope because he does save her life. Next I have Hating the Player by Rebecca Jenshack. This is the second book in the Campus Wallflower series which are college, college romances all about four friends who are campus wallflowers. So I did read book one a few years ago but I just decided to finally pick up this one I think also because the covers got redone and I think they're really cute and the new covers like showed up on my lippy and I was like okay no those are so cute I need to listen. <laughs> the heroine of this book she is in college to be a fashion designer and this is her second chance romance with the boy next door. Um, he is on the basketball team. He's a very prominent basketball player for the college and she hates him because something that happened a few months or a year beforehand he like really betrayed her and she absolutely just hates him and he wants to get back in her good graces he wants to grovel he wants to get her back so it is a cute college second chance romance this one is a basketball romance there's a caretaking scene that i love i love a caretaking scene where the aftermath is like their relationship like flips so after i think she like gets the flu or food poisoning or something and he takes care of her and after that occurrence like things just shift between the two of them and they're kind of like more amicable with each other and it leads to more obviously so i love when a caretaking scene can like shift a character's relationship it's a college romance hate to love and a second chance romance next i have lessons in sin by pam godwin I i'm actually not gonna be talking about this book because i read it for a vlog specifically for my channel members so if you'd like to become a channel member of mine the link is always down below in the description um i think you pay like $2.99 a month to get exclusive videos from me every single week. So yeah, I'm about to post or post soon a reading vlog with this and a few other books in it. And this book was very interesting. If you don't know, this is a priest romance, like a student teacher priest romance. So very, very interesting. <laughs> Rebel Air by Vikeelan and Penelope Ward is my next read. And this is the first book in the Rush duet. Go into this knowing it's a duet. I had no idea it was a duet. And I got to the end and I was like, what what and the hold for number two was a few weeks long i just got it in so i have to listen to that but i was shocked <laughs> essentially our hero owns the bar that the heroine starts working at and things happen between the two of them he's very closed off to love he's a big tattooed motorcycle man and she's the new city girl so um that's basically all i can leave you with but there is like a cliffhanger ending that i wasn't expecting and i was shocked and so i need to read the next one <laughs> this one is a bad boy romance boss employee it's a duet and a slow burn romance i have the other wallflower book i was talking about this is it happened one autumn i have the step back version for this one as well love it it's perfect for autumn okay it happened one autumn, read it during autumn, do it. This was the book we read for September. The live show for this one was on my channel and we discussed it and I loved rereading this. It's a hate to love romance, so it's really good. I can't really I can't really talk about these books, honestly. Like I have a really hard time like summarizing books that I read because I don't want to spoil things. I love going into books blind and so I don't love talking about the summaries if I don't want to spoil anything but this was a great reread. I have another shorter audiobook. This is Never Fall for a Dragon by Lola Glass. This is the first book in the Mate Mountain series. So these are paranormal romances. I've only read this one but I think my Libby has if not the second one then the whole rest of the series as well. Oh by the way humans and like paranormal creatures like live together in harmony blah 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 in the world. <laughs> um so the heroine she's a human woman. She sees like this dragon creature like kind of like low-key yelling at the woman he's with at the table at also the coffee shop um and she's like you know what i'm gonna stand up for this woman little does she know that that's like a brother sister tiff they're in a little tiff at the moment and um she goes up to the table to defend this woman and the hero takes one look at her and smells her and his mating instincts kick in he's a dragon shifter and he basically like takes her back to his house and kidnaps her. And it's like, you have to stay with me for like a month or more until this like mating frenzy like sizzles down, okay? <laughs> it was like a fun, funny shifter romance. It kind of gave me vibes a little bit of Kimberly Lemming, but in like our world, but Kimberly Lemming is way funnier. 
<laughs> um, no, I don't think anyone could top her humor for me, honestly. But I did love the like dragon shifter aspects in here. It was really cool. And I did love what the author did with the different like lore and paranormal creatures as well. This is a dragon romance, has forced proximity. It's a paranormal romance. We have a possessive hero and the hero is a shifter. Next, I read Curvy Girl Summer by Danielle Allen. This was a recommendation from my lovely bestie Zay over at Witty Reads. The heroine of this story gets stood up on a first date at a bar across the street from her apartment building and she's like so sick of dating until the bartender comes up to her and is like hey how about you try this dating app out and then you can just meet your dates here every Friday and I will always be here to like watch out for you because I know online dating can be like scary and sometimes dangerous she's like okay deal so she has this long line of like awful horrible dates <laughs> at this bar and it's actually her romance with the bartender but he's wearing a wedding ring so she can't be feeling these feelings for him this was a fun book definitely like a cute summer read don't get me wrong it's cute but it's also hot as hell like this book <laughs> this man has a mouth on him okay big mouth on him <laughs> so this one is a black love romance um it involves dating apps a dirty talk <laughs> friends to lovers great banter plus size representation and it is slow burn i read silver fox by kayla gross um i have an art print in here and i can't show you that because it's nsfw <laughs> um but kayla was so sweet and sent this book my way with a few art prints um but i finally got around to reading it this is a grand grand old time of a book okay perfect like summery read i know we're past the summer but like it still feels like summer here in Texas. So like if you need like a book to make you all hot and bothered, but also you want to cool off by the pool, look no further. So this is a Daz Best Friend romance. It's Age Gap, Silver Fox. Like, whew, this was fun. I think the heroine's name is Alex, if I'm not mistaken, but she ends up going to her dad's, her parents' lake house to like let off some steam. And then she's cooking in the kitchen one day and then this man walks in the door and she's like, oh my gosh, who are you? And turns out that is her dad's like best friend and coworker. And he's been stressed out a lot and hasn't really taken a break from work. So her dad is like, here are the keys to the lake house. Go stay up there, not knowing that his daughter's already there. There's like, no one told each other that they were gonna be there. They were planning on spending the week then just separate, doing their own things, but they can't help be very drawn to one another, okay? Even though they know they shouldn't be. <laughs> It's really hot. It's really fun. I really recommend it. Loved it. It's an age gap romance. Dad's best friend. Dirty talk. Uh, forbidden. Forced proximity. It's on Kindle Unlimited. You have plus size representation. It's a novella. Silver Fox. Summer Reads. And there are toys in here. Fun. Fun, fun. Next is a fantasy romance. I have Serpents of Sky and Flame. This one is a fantasy romance, but I want to also say like it's also monster romance-esque. I think the reason why, one of the reasons why the rating is a 3.66, that's not higher on Goodreads, is because there are probably fantasy romance readers reading this book and it's like, why is a dragon, a literal dragon doing that to that woman? <laughs> I'm like, have you never read a monster romance, okay? It's totally fine that he's doing that with his dragon tongue, like it's fine. <laughs> so essentially the dragons and these humans that the heroines kingdom is a part of she's a princess of these humans they're at war and the heroine's mother who's the queen hires a sorcerer to kill all female dragons so all the female dragons just start dying and um the male dragons decide you know what mating season is soon and we're gonna go to a frenzy and we need females so they steal human women from the streets like pick them up and the heroine is one of them she gets captured by our hero who is the king to like all these dragons and he plans on hiring his own sorcerer and turning all of these women into female dragons granted at this point like all the dragons are dragons they're not dragon shifters they're not um it isn't until the sorcerer comes and actually changes all of the dragons into dragon shifters into men dragon shifter men instead that he's like what is going on <laughs> so it is like a kidnapping romance and yeah they do some things when he is in his dragon form okay don't 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 hate on that okay it's really good <laughs> and this is another book that i was not expecting for there to like be like a cliffhanger on the end like i thought this would wrap up but no it is a freaking series like i hate that for myself <laughs> so i need to read the next one there's a bunch of fun tropes in this one okay it's an addictive read i read it really fast um capture captive cover lust because i love this cover um it's a dragon romance 
it's a duet and i need this second one um it's a fantasy romance faded mates Force proximity kidnapping it's on kindle unlimited it's a monster romance the never been kissed trope the hero's never been kissed before um a shapeshifter size difference because he's a giant Ryan. And you also have a virgin hero, which I love those. So. This is Pole Position by Rebecca J. Caffery. This is an F1 Formula One racing romance um, between two players on the same players, is that drivers on the same um, like F1 team? And they don't really get off on the right foot because they don't like each other at first. But then the hatred turns to lust. Okay, it does turn to lust. There's an age gap in here, the more seasoned driver um has been driving the circuit been on the circuit since the other one was smaller he would look up to him literally had a poster of him on his wall um so this one really reminds me of broad white and royal blue but not like it gave me kind of like the same vibes where they have to like also pretend to like be friends for the media because they kind of had this like blow up moment on camera at one point and their team is like you have to at least pretend to just be nice to each other and then it turns into like we have to hide that we are getting together. <laughs> this was a fun read. I did not realize that there would be so many emotional topics in here. So like there's a trigger warning, there's a few trigger warnings. So like trigger warning for family member with Parkinson's, um, trigger warning for death of a family member, trigger warning for parental abandonment. Like it's, it gets deep. I was not expecting that, honestly. I think that happens a lot with cartoon covers like these. You don't really expect it to be that deep and then it gets that deep and you're like, I was not mentally prepared for that to read something like that. But I did enjoy this one and I do hope that this author writes more in this series because I feel like there are some side characters that I would love to get romances for. This is an age gap romance. It's angsty. Oh, you have a brooding hero, caretaking scene. It's a celebrity romance. Formula One, Hate to Love, um, it's an MM romance, Opposites Attract, a sports romance, and they are teammates. Next is Faye Divided by Lisa Ray Roman. So I read book number one last month. This is book number 1.5 in the series, so it's shorter in length. It's a novella, um, but our heroine, her name is Sarah. She is not doing the best because her husband, her mate, has been gone and doesn't know where he is um she doesn't know this but he's actually like being undercover for some like werewolf bad guys well, that's all i can really say i can't really say anything else but um yeah it's not a second chance but like i don't really know how to describe it i don't think there's like a trip for it just that like she's trying to get her mate back to her um and he's like undercover doing some stuff so it was a fun quick little read and then the last book that i read <laughs> in September is my favorite book of the month possibly one of my favorite books of the year this is the Prince of Prohibition this one is so stinking good this is by Madeline Marks it's the first book in the Fae of the Roaring Age series so I hate comparing things to Akatar. I hate when people do that I'm like not everything's like Akatar. okay I get it okay but if you love Akamath you need to read this book <laughs> if you love Akamath you need to read the book. It's basically like Akmath and then like the 1920s like together. That's what this book kind of like is. But no, it's like original. It's like completely original in its own way. Um, I just feel like if you love Akmath though, you will love this book. I'm just telling you right now. Um, Cause I freaking loved this. So this book is about Adeline um, and she lives in the twenties, lives on a farm with her brother and her father. And her whole life she has been worn to keep away from the fae and she's the only person that she knows that can see these fae creatures she can see little brownies and pixies and other creatures like around her farm no one else can see them but her but she's been warned all of her life to stay away from them or the devil will take her and that's just the beginning so it starts out when she's a little girl and then it jumps to when she is 20 years old and the devil comes and finds her and that's all I all I can say. All like all I can say. B from Mama Needs to Read Romance recommended me this book, and uh, it has been waiting on my Libby hold for months, and I finally got to it. I'm filming this on October first, and I already finished book two. <laughs> I already finished book two. Like I'm obsessed with these books, and the third one doesn't come out till 2025, like halfway through the year. I'm devastated. <laughs> so I already want to reread these. They are so good. This book is fantastic. I loved it so much, and I need more people to read it. I don't have the tropes listed like 
in detail right now because I haven't written my review yet on Goodreads and that's when I write my tropes out. But if I can recall, you have Faye, magic, there's magical stuff in here. You know what, how, you can, how about you go check my Goodreads <laughs> after this if you want to know um, because I'll probably fill that in later today. But this book is so good. Anywhere people to read it is fantastic. I need to buy copies for my shelves like immediately. Anyways, so you how much those are all of the books that I ended up reading in September. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. If you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me a um, drink of any kind <laughs> emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.